All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I have recently gone over a set of two sets of PowerPoint slides. Uh, one for Murox HTML5 and CSS3 third edition, and one for Murox JavaScript and jQuery third edition. All right, this is all part of the AWD Application and Web Development 1000 Web Technologies class here at Rankin Technical College. Now, first we went over the uh, chapters in the HTML and CSS book. I'm not going to read these to you, but if you take a look, this is what we covered. Section 1 was basically on learning HTML, the hypertext markup language, and learning CSS, cascading style sheets. Then we went into Section 2, which built upon those skills we learned earlier, and we added new ones. Then in Section 3, we had an introduction to both JavaScript and the JavaScript library jQuery. And I guess even a little bit of the jQuery user interface and jQuery mobile. All right, finally we ended with how to design and deploy a website. And I'm going to actually come back in just a couple minutes to Chapter 18 and talk about the stuff that's in here. Not right now, though. From there, we went on to the JavaScript book, where we learned JavaScript essentials in part in section one. Then we jumped into jQuery in section two. And then we learned some advanced JavaScript skills in section three. All right, well, as mentioned, what I want to do, oh, I guess I have the wrong one there, but that's fine. <clears throat> in just a couple minutes, I'm going to go back over chapter 18 on how to design a website. Not this second, but in just a couple minutes. But before I do that, after I get done talking about how to design a website and talk to you about the website that I'm planning on designing, probably three different ways, but we'll get to that in a bit. First, I'd like to talk to you about what do we want to use as an editor. In other words, what do we want to use to put our code into the system so that we're able to run it? All right, so I went online and found this article. And if you go, geez, I'll never remember that. Just type in 10 best JavaScript editors. Hit enter, and it's the first one that comes up from InfoWorld. All right, and basically these are the same article. <clears throat> now, I will tell you that the ones that are in here, I have used Sublime Text. I just downloaded Visual Studio Code. I have used Brackets. I have used Atom. I have used Komodo Edit. I have used Notepad++ probably more extensively than the other ones put together. The BB Edit, the TextMate, the Emacs, and the Vim, most of these last four are pretty much um, for either the Apple or Unix environment. So when you look here, Sublime Text has got the highest rating along with Visual Studio Code. And if you click more, the learn more, my guess is that you can get the download, all right, for those different things. All right, I should be able to uh, sign in here. All right. There we go. Okay. So there's a little thing on each one. You can see the coloring for Sublime Text, although I believe that you can change it if you don't like the coloring that's shown there. Here's Visual Studio Code, which looks very similar. Brackets, which again looks similar, except it's almost reversed color-wise. Atom, which looks similar to what we saw before. Komodo Edit, which I don't even know if they show, but let's take a quick look. There's Komodo Edit. Notepad++, again, they don't show that, but I can bring that up for you right now. Here is Notepad++. I can make it bigger, etc. Start up a new document. Depending on the language you use, there'll be some color coding, some syntax. And again, BB Edit, Mac only. TextMate, MacBooks. Emacs which I used to use back in the days when I was a Unix programmer. 
Emacs, same thing. Vim, which I've never used, but again, it says it's for Unix. So it says decisions, decisions. So in other words, you know, which one do you want to use? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to use two. Some of the work that I do, I'm going to end up actually using... Um, I'm going to actually end up using Notepad++. So you can see when you start to create HTML, how it does color coding, etc. All right. But I'm also going to use Visual Studio Code. And why am I also using Visual Studio Code? Well, the main reason for that is in the first semester, all right, in the first semester, students use, they learn CSS, HTML, JavaScript, okay? Regardless of the editor, that's what they learn. In the second semester, students learn the C-sharp programming language, and they use Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code, which is kind of a scaled-down version of Visual Studio, but Visual Studio. In the third semester, students work with ASP.NET, again using Visual Studio. So it seemed to me like it would make sense to use Visual Studio. But before we get to that point, ah, we'll see here. let's talk about Chapter 18 that was from our book, How to Design a Website. What web users want is usability, usability conventions, think mobile from the start, let the home page or use the home page to sell the site, let users know where they are, make the best use of web page space, divide long pages into shorter chunks, know the principles of graphic design, write for the web, a four-step process on how to design a website, the life cycle of a website, define the audience and set the goals, develop the site map, wireframe the critical pages, and illustrate the critical pages. Finally, other design considerations, development teams, and top-down design and prototyping. Now, I have brought this back up again. I'm not going to sit there and, and as I've done before, you've already got presentations, stuff of me going over this, but I want to spend literally, let's see, it is 623, about seven minutes then, going over this. You want a website that's easy to use. Ours isn't going to look like this. We'll talk about it in just a couple minutes. Here's the key thing. We want users to find what they're looking for as quickly and easily as possible. In an ideal world, a website will abide by the three-click rule, which means within three clicks, users can find anything they're looking for. All right? You want them to be able to get their information and do what they want to do as quickly and as easily as possible. In other words, in an ideal world, you want them to be able to get in and get out as soon as possible. You want their experience to be a positive one so that they return. Now, most website users, as it says here, they'll scan a page. They don't like to scroll. You know, if they have to scroll, they want to go up and down. They never want to go left to right, especially on a small device. And since the majority of people today are using either phones or tablets to look at websites, you want to make it as easy for them to use as possible. They often click, click links and buttons in hope of finding what they're looking for, and they may click on the back button if they don't find it. We'll talk about this above the fold as we get into it. We'll talk about grouping related items into separate components and adhering to current conventions for web usability. Now, are we going to make something that looks like this? Yeah, in your dreams. Ours is, you know, to be honest with you, mine's a concept right now. I know what I want us to do, and we'll just see what it looks like as we get into it, all right? The header should consist of a logo, some kind of a tagline, utilities, and some kind of a navigation bar. We'll have that. The tagline identifies what's unique about the website. Oh, what do we have here? I don't know if this one exactly does, but you can make your own determination. 
The nav bar provides links that divide the site into sections. We'll have something like that. The utilities consist of links to useful but not primary information. If the site requires a search function, it should be in the header and it should consist of a large text box followed by go or search. <clears throat> I don't want to read this stuff to you. You want your navigation bar to be intuitive. People should be able to use it, look at it, understand what they're doing as simply as possible. This is the one that they create in the book. And ours is going to actually look more like this. We'll try to have a little bit of graphics in there. But we'll have some kind of an aside, etc. I'm not sure yet. I want it to look nice when we bring it up in mobile. And sometimes I'll call it mobile. Sometimes I'll call it mobile. Sorry about that. We will try to use responsive web design. And we will build a separate website for mobile. No, we'll, we'll see about that. I don't know yet because we haven't done it. We're going to design for the regular computer browser first, and then we'll talk some about the media queries, and then we'll look at the mobile. All right? That's still the way many people do it today. All right? Ours is going to be selling, but we're not going to be selling a product per se. So here's some guidelines. This is what we want to do. Emphasize what the site offers that's valuable. Don't worry about how our, our site is going to uh, differ from competing sites. We want to show people why they should be there. We want to emphasize high priority tasks. We want them to be able to get in, get out, know what they want to do, and be able to do it. We want to group items into navigation areas. We want to only use icons for navigations if the users, yeah, okay. We'll design the home page so it's different from the other pages of the site, yes. We'll code the title. Yeah, that's fine. We're not going to, ours is not going to involve shopping. Sorry if that disappoints you. Oh, let's see. Active links highlighted. We'll see. Breadcrumbs. That would be nice. We do want to let users always know where they are, as opposed to having to look in, this, in the uh, address bar, which is kind of tough. Some users are not used to that. So breadcrumbs seems like it would be a good a good thing to do. We will not at all have a, a home page that looks like this. We'll keep our header fairly small. We will prioritize the components for each page. All right. We'll give the most important components. We'll put them in primary locations. We'll probably end up using some chunking. Notice they've got this chunk, this chunk, this chunk, this chunk, this chunk, and this chunk. All right, we won't have to worry about that. We won't have a lot of graphics. We will try to use alignment so that related items on a web page line up with one another. We'll try to use proximity where, where related items are close together. We'll use repetition so there will be a lot of repetition between pages. And we'll try to use some contrast. All right, the typographical guidelines, I'll let you read this stuff. We're going to try to follow those guidelines. We'll try to write for the web. In other words, we won't do this. We'll do this. All right. We'll try to follow these guidelines here. Again, to me, it's, it's a waste of my time and a waste of your time. All right. For me to sit there and read stuff I've already gone over with you. We'd like to make this easier to maintain. We'll probably do very little with tables. We might put a table in. We'll see. All right, general procedure for designing a website. We're going to define our audience. I don't know if I'm going to really have the time to develop a site map, but I'll probably do something. Sketch your wireframe. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, but we'll see. But we want to know the goals of our website, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, etc. Maybe we should do something like some kind of a site map. All right. 
maybe we should do some kind of a wireframe or some kind of a sketch to go to a wireframe. I don't know. That's pretty much it. So let's talk about what we're going to do. Well, <clears throat> one of the first things, and I'm just going to go out here. I'm on the internet already. I'm going to go out to rankin.edu. All right. And hopefully you notice Rankin's colors are red and white. All right. You see it in here. You see it a lot in here. You see, even see the little red underscore here. But you can see there's a lot in here with red. All right. A lot of stuff in here. Not only red, not only white. I understand that. But there's a lot of stuff in here with red and white. Now, I've got my choice here. I can either pause the computer for a couple minutes or... I can have you watch me go and search some of my own stuff because there's something I want to show you. So I'm going to pause for just a couple minutes here. All right, I think I found what I'm looking for here. Um, tell you a very, try to make it very quick story, and that is uh, when I started at Rankin Technical College, which was in July of 2016, I had been there not very long, and um, I heard that there was a Wentzville Fair, and Wentzville was going to have a booth there. And I was asked if I wanted to man the booth. I, you know, everyone was asked, but I volunteered to take the uh, a 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. shot the first night. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, I'd like to sell this new program that's going to start at Rankin in August of 2016 the application and web development program. So I threw together this little site that I created myself. You can see it has a home page and I put some stuff in here with a little, you know, FAQ type of thing. It has an about page. It talked about the program. It's got a page on each one of the classes that are in the program. and it has a contact page okay it really wasn't responsive just so you know all right so if i bring it down you notice it's not responsive okay so i want to bring that up from the get-go it's not super intuitive etc i didn't set it up so you can click on the on here and go to the home page at any time all right so there were many ways this could be improved all right but what I want to do is I want to build a website that is on the Rankin Technical College Application and Web Development Program. And hopefully will answer any question that any prospective student has regarding the program. So in some ways, it'll almost be like this, what you see here on steroids. But there's a lot of wasted space here. There's a lot of waste period in here. All right. So again, you know, one of the things that we just talked about for designing a website. Just move ahead here. Define the audience and set the goals for the website. Well, the audience are, are going to be prospective students, parents, whatever, that may want to look into going into the Rankin Technical College Application and Web Development Program. All right. I have no idea how many pages this is going to have. If I developed a site map, you know, I what's interesting when they show the site map here, they've got the home page and they've got all the other pages that go off of it. We're going to have something similar to that. All right. But it's kind of funny because this this assumes that the way this looks that these pages here are siblings. All right, where that really and truly isn't the case, they're more, I should say that these are children of home, where they are more siblings. Okay, that's really the way that they are. But I'm going to try to figure that out, figure out, you know, just taking a, a wild guess, for lack of better words, That was the article I showed you before. Just throw up the old notepad itself. This is, you know, a very archaic editor. 
but I'm going to have a home page. All right. Then at a minimum, as we get started, we'll have an about page. We'll have a contact page. All right. So let's just put those there for now. Okay. On the under the about page, well, we'll have what? AWD 1000, which is the course we're in now. AWD uh, 1100, which is C sharp. AWD 1111, which is ASP.NET, and AWD 1112, which is JavaScript. All right. So we'll have those. I plan on having something here with instructors. And there are three people basically who teach in this program. There's Evan Gudmisted, who is the assistant department chair. There is Paul Smith. They are both instructors at the St. Louis campus. And there's me, the instructor at the Wentzville campus. All right. Let's push it over one more time. There we go. All right. And for now, okay, let, in fact, let's add one more here. Let's add Gen Ed classes. So those are general education classes that students have to take. All right. So I've got one, two, three, four levels. And it looks like I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, at least twelve pages. That doesn't necessarily mean that each one of these will be in their own page. There's so many different ways that you set this up. And I want to end this presentation by just, for lack of better words, giving you kind of a uh, spiel or whatever you want to call it that I give my students. I always tell them, imagine that you were taking a class with me but rather than it being a class on websites or programming or whatever, it was a class in painting. Now, I have no ability to paint whatsoever, but let's just for sake of argument pretend that I do. All right? And students come into class on the first day of class. And I walk in, and as an exercise, what I do is I walk in and I have the students... I've got a big bowl of fruit. Let's go out and see if we go to Google. We go to Google Images, and I'm going to put in here bowl of fruit. All right. Any of these would work. This looks pretty colorful, so let's just grab this one. All right. So I put that out there. And I tell students, you have one hour. I would like you to draw paint, I should say, your interpretation of this bowl of fruit. All right. And one person, let's say, really sees this orange here, and that's what really stands out. So they've got the orange. They make a few other things around it, but they concentrate on the orange. Someone else concentrates on the grapes. Someone else on the apples. Someone else, I don't know what that is, a papaya, whatever. Someone else, the pineapple the strawberries, looks like a plum or something, the bananas, etc. But the idea is everyone looks at this and has a different interpretation of how it should be done. Unless the instructor says, I want you to draw it and I want you to make it look exactly like that. To me, instructors who do that are instructors who are saying, if I were to do that with a website, I'd be saying, Hey, I know how to do this, and you should all do it like me. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you a way to do it. And that's what I just tried showing you with this right here. So in the next lecture, we're going to come in, and we're going to begin some work. And we're going to do this a little bit differently. And also, last thing, promise, let me tell you, when I get done with this, and it'll depend on how much time this takes, I'd like to go back and redo this website using a package called Bootstrap in Bootstrap 4, which is the latest and greatest. And then finally, I'd like to do it one more time 
using a package that that um, really is kind of bootstrap on steroids. It's very more, much more drag and dropish. It's called Moby Rise. We'll see how it goes once we get into it, but I'll be back with the next lecture where we'll actually start to create the site. I'll be back with that very shortly. Thanks.